Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Gloostick channel. I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore full time and have a collection of hundreds of monster ecology and strategy videos on my channel, including a complete A to Z list of all of the creatures in the monster manual. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing as I upload at least twice a week. And this week, this will be the fourth video. Bonus video, another in the demon series. This one, I, I, apologies to end up. Today I present to you an aquatic horror that thrives on corruption pollution and rot the vile and terrible wastrelists that ender actually requested that i do uh, quite a while ago so sorry i didn't get around to it buddy they are aloof particularly by demon standards preferring the isolated depths of the foul waters of plains that have completely fallen to ruin and now form just another of the countless layers of the abyss they are known in many places as water lords though they don't often visit anywhere other than the lower planes of existence and when one of them does arrive in the prime material plane as members of the greater Tanari demon kind, their presence is a major threat to all mortal life and the very stability of the world they have, for want of a better word, infected. A wastrelith is a frightfully fishy demon, over 40 feet in length, combining aspects of an eel and an anglerfish, two bulging lidless eyes stare out, stare out of its blunt head, gleaming with malevolence, and its maw is filled with long needle-like fangs. It has two spindly arms ending with raking claws, and its long spindly body ends in a powerful fluke. The exact configuration of their limbs and other features vary a lot from the accounts of those who survive seeing one in person, because just getting clo that close to one of them is highly dangerous. Their demonic power is an uncontrollable. It's as uncontrollable as the ocean itself, and they can grow to quite enormous size, bloated on the death and destruction they generate. They are described as arrogant bullies. They will not rest until every creature around them is terrorized into submission and obeying the wastrelith's every command. They drink in corruption and seek to drive all others to acts of violence against each other. So if there is an unprecedented outbreak of piracy at sea, or the local cutthroats and brigands have become particularly bold and brutal recently, or the orcs and goblinoids have started their raids on farms and frontiers a lot earlier than usual, it may be because a demon such as a race relith is sowing the seeds of violence in the hearts and minds of mortal creatures for many miles in every direction. They can walk on land, but their long segmented eel-like bodies are much better suited to the water, and they have uh, been toned down a fair bit for the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, but are still fairly formidable. For uh, instance, they got rid of their breath weapon, which was a boiling uh, water steam, uh, which they are immune to themselves. They are highly toxic, completely immune to any poison themselves, but they spread contamination all around themselves. A wastrelith's noxious presence even affects nearby water when the demon travels on land. They corrupt the water, which contains a measure of the demon's essence, responding to its commands, perhaps hardening to prevent foes from escaping or erupting in a surge that would drag would-be victims to the, uh, into its foul reach. Any beings that actually drink this water might wither away until they die or remain alive only to become the thrall of chaos and evil. Inst insanity and actual physical mutation are quite likely, particularly in animal life and ordinary non-player character people who live in the area and use the waters in their castles, towns and farmsteads. So three-eyed fish, certainly. In the abyss, wastreliths are often pressed into the service of demon lords of the abyssal seas. Dagon, the demon lord of sea monsters, counts thousands of wastreliths as vassals um, in his realm of Ish uh, Ishiar the greatest ocean of the abyss and many of them uh, he tends to, to he lends to his uh, buddy i would say liege uh, demogorgon the prince of demons in his realm of gaping moor which is um, on the borders of Ishia. wastrelith guard the shoals of uh, nocticula's midnight isles and the fringes of goganta's swampy realm of mephism and dozens of wastreliths battle for control of the slithering pools of the diseased demon lord uh, Ibduregian. Even the river Styx is host to these aquatic fiends, lone hunters who can be found as far along its course as the drowning court of Charon, the horseman of death, the, the river boatman of the river Styx. The wastreliths listed in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes is a challenge rating 13 demon, and I would say this is the entry level reasonably low-powered wastrelists with much greater examples of than this to be found throughout the multiverse with legendary actions resistances and both lair and regional effects the more powerful versions should have magical powers such as casting bane contagion control water 
create or destroy water, dispel evil and good, gaseous form, mind spike, ray of enfeeblement, to name a few spells. The artwork doesn't really do them much justice either, I'm afraid. Uh, they are far more horrific to look at, with flesh riddled with squirming parasites, hooks, spines, coiling tentacles, flesh that splits and oozes vile fluids, venomous fangs, great soulless black fish eyes, multiple small eyes randomly found on their head and torso, a stench so bad you can taste it in waves of evil power from the more advanced waste thrillers that can cause ordinary people to simply double over and vomit uncontrollably. Similar to uh, Dragon's Fear Effect, but one of sickness and revulsion. The movie... Um, Cloverfield, for instance, has uh, a similar sort of thing with, uh, I would pose a threat to mortal life around the waste release as the parasites and things that come off this thing carry contagion and disease that can actually kill uh, people before they get anywhere near this demon. Like all demons, they take half damage from cold, fire, lightning, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. That means magical fire, lightning, and cold do full damage, in case you wonder, ever wondered or thought that that only meant the weapon damage. This is why demons will target spellcasters and take them down as quickly as possible, then target any foes who appear to have magical weapons. They are highly intelligent and will certainly seek out protection from magical attacks such as amulets and perhaps braciers that will fit them. Though there is a slight chance the items will evaporate away into bubbling ichor along with the rest of the demon when they get killed and their essence res returns to the abyss. Unlike lesser demons, the Wastrelith is resistant to magic, and it has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. They have an armor class of 18 and 15 d10 plus 75 or between 90 and 225 with an average of 157 hit points. A swimming speed of 80 feet per round, so wickedly fast in, in the water. Even on the ground they can still cover 30 feet per round and I see no problem with giving them a similar climb speed as they can have octopus like suckers sprouting like a rash of burst boils along their body. The strength of 19, dexterity 18, constitution 21, and their intelligence of 19 is why they are technically a type 5 demon, quite able to command a legion as their general. Their wisdom of 12 and charisma of 14 means they're not quite on a par with a Baylor when it comes to situational awareness and strategy, strategy though. They have a passive perception of 11 and dark vision out to 120 feet, also telepathy to that range, and of course they speak abyssal. A horrid language that sounds like growling dogs, clashing steel, meat hooks ripping flesh, and the screams of a berserk killer. On their once uh, on their turn, a waste relith can use its ability to manipulate water and make three other attacks. It prefers to use the water to draw prey into melee range, where it can tear them to pieces and uh, feast on their flesh. It is plus nine to hit on all physical attacks. Has ten foot reach uh, due to its large size. The bite does 40, 12 plus 4 piercing damage, and the claws do 46 plus 4 piercing damage, uh, slashing damage. I also see no reason why it could not use its serpentine body to coil around and constrict a victim, just like a giant snake. The water manipulation is represented as abilities called Corrupt Water, Grasping Spout, and a bonus action called Undertow. At the start of each of the waste of this turns, exposed water within 30 feet of it is befouled, Underwater, this effect lightly obscures the area until it current clears it away. Water in containers remains corrupted until it evaporates. A creature that consumes this foul water or swims in it must make a DC 18 constitution saving throw. On a successful save, the creature is immune to the foul water for 24 hours. On a failed save, the creature takes 46 poison damage and is poisoned for one minute. At the end of this time, the poisoned creature must repeat the saving throw. On a fail, Failure, the creature takes 48 poison damage and is poisoned until it finishes a long rest. So, pretty bad. If another demon drinks the water, the foul water is in action, it gains 20, uh, 2d10 hit temporary hit points, which is another reason why Wastreliths are well suited to dominate and command other demons, as they will flock to the tasty fountain of corruption that the Wastreliths can produce. As a bonus action from the waste relith, uh, when it's underwater, it can cause all water within 60 feet of it to become difficult terrain for other creatures until the start of its next turn. Essentially, it can turn it into a gelatinous slop. Also, during combat, the waste relith magically launches a spout of water at one creature it can see within 60 feet of it. The target must make a DC 17 strength saving throw, and it has disadvantage if it's underwater. On a failed save, it takes 48 plus 4 acid damage and is pulled up to 60 feet toward the waste relith. 
On a successful save, it takes half as much damage and isn't pulled. One of the reasons Waithlerists are so dangerous is even when destroyed, the corruption they leave behind may linger in the world for years, and such energies uh, make further vile manifestations of the abyss all the more likely. Evil spellcasters may seek out such places of corruption to perform rituals in the hope of summoning and controlling a demon of their own. But, particularly in the case of the Wastrelith, such containment and control is very difficult for creatures of such pure chaos and evil, and failure to enslave them typically results in the spellcaster's violent death, and a brand new source of corruption to plague the world and tip it one step closer to oblivion. Thankfully, Wastrelists are far less keen to travel to the uh, to and draw new planes into the ruinous embrace of the abyss. They are less interested in the big picture and seem more content to rule over their own ocean domains and horrible plains, lurking in mutated and dead coral reefs, diseased swamps full of venomous animals and plant life, and so on. On the prime material, a Wastrelith's territory typically includes a 25 mile diameter circle, at the centre of which is the fiend's palace. The palace can be a marvel of undersea engineering or simply a hole in a coral reef. A Wastrelith that has not established its territory will often terrorise the shipping in the area, roaming around destroying boats on a whim and driving out such creatures as sea dragons and aquatic elves who will be wise to flee the area. Tritons and other aquatic beings of a more noble intent though will seek to do battle with the Wastrelith often at a terrible toll on their life and their population. Also, is it just me? Or have the game designers just quietly removed the ability of teleportation from most of the demons and also severely curtailed their ability to gate in other members of their own kind? I remember Wastrelith could quite easily do this uh, back in the older editions. I remember the time when demons were one of the very worst things you could encounter in Dungeons and Dragons. These days, meh. I'd be more scared of a mob of wild boars. Well, not that much more scared. Please hit the like button if you made it this far. Subscribe if you like what I do. Check out my Patreon for some exclusive content and all the full scripts for these videos and sometimes delayed requests that you can make to me. I will give them priority if I can. Buy some merchandise, wear your geek with pride and as always, thanks for listening and I'll be back with more for you very soon.